Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to learn more about the Docker concept. Not only that, we are going to pull an official image of the Docker, which is a recommended image to understand more about the Docker. And we are going to understand a little bit onto the detail about the commands that we are throwing on our terminal uh, using the Docker. So this is a classic diagram of how the Docker images are work. Images in the Docker is like a snapshot. By the term snapshot means just like when you take a screenshot in your computer, exactly whatever that is happening at that time, it's being captured. Exactly same happens when you take a snapshot of your operating system or virtual machine or a Docker container. Whatever the configuration is at that exact time, the same piece of code is being captured at that moment and then later on can be deployed over the production or maybe anywhere else. So this images of these dockers can be pulled from the hub.docker.com. We are going to pull that one of them in a minute. But right now, let me try to explain you what is the underlying concept and even when we are going to make the Docker images, what we actually do. So the configuration files in the Docker are pretty easy to capture. That can be done using the snapshot feature that provides uh, is provided with the Docker. But the most important thing is the top layer. So as you can see, this uh, colored box is kind of our image. In the bottom or the majority section is being covered by the configuration as well as the ecosystem which helps to run that application, maybe Node, maybe Django, whatever that is. But on the top layer, it is being divided by the default commands. Now, there can be more commands in here based on what arguments you are passing, but there are some default commands which gives you. For example, in the very first or initial videos when we worked on the hello world, a hello world is being thrown back to us using that hello world Docker image. That means there might be just some echo command there which helps us to get back a hello world. That's pretty much it. But we are going to learn how we can have advantage of these default commands and we're going to talk more on that. So again, we will learn later on how we can have these kinds of default commands in our own Docker image. Now moving forward, uh, let me walk you through on to this official website. So go to hub.docker.com and just type busy. Now this will give you a busy box. This is also a Docker official image. But the question is, why is this official image? And if I check on to the right hand side, there are so many versions of it available. We're going to talk more about how these tags actually work with these latest and variety of versions of the Docker. But I want to bring your attention to somewhere at the bottom, which says, what is BusyBox, the Swiss Army knife for embedded Linux. Now, this is a very lightweight between one to five MB only on the disk, so it doesn't consume much of the resources, but it's most common Unix files and utilities like ls commands and basic commands of the Linux kernels are available here. This can be really helpful for us for the initial testing and initial learning of the Docker. Now, in this entire documentation at a little bit lower, you can also see there are some more commands to use and run these Docker shells. I recommend you to not look at them because I will walk you through later on this. The commands like uh, dash it is a pretty detailed command. We are going to talk more on that. But these are some of the things which I highly recommend you to take a look, but don't worry too much. You just have to read them out. It's good for you. Later on, when I'll be explaining this it command, it's going to be much more helpful and understandable for you. Moving further, now copy and paste to pull this image. So usually we were running the command docker run and busy box. If the image was there in our cache, it's great. Otherwise it was getting pulled. But this time we want to do it different and more polished way. So we're going to copy this uh, just by clicking up here. It says docker pull busy box. And we're going to just go onto our terminal. Let's clean that up. And we are going to just run that command docker pull busy box. Now it's going to pull the tag the latest. Now later on, definitely we are going to talk a bit more about what these tagging and how these things work. Since the image is ridiculously small, just 5 MB, it doesn't take much. Now let's see what happens when I just say, instead of the pull, I want to run this busy box. So I'm going to just say run busy box. Now when you run the busy box directly, it just does nothing. But in the hello world, we were getting a uh, hello world bag. So busy box, is kind of a layer of Linux which is given to you and you can perform some commands on that. For example, after the busy box, if I press space and then type the classic Linux command, which is ls, 
used for listing the directories in the Linux. I hit enter and some of the directories are being listed to me. Now, if you're on the Mac or on Windows, no, these are not your directories. These are directories which are coming up from the busy box. So Windows users, don't get surprised. These are not your folders. These are the folders which are coming up from the image of the BusyBox. Now, BusyBox is a very classic way of learning the basics of Linux as well. So in case you want to give it a try, that's also possible. But now we need to talk more about how we can run these commands. Not only ls, all the classic commands which are supported by the kernel of the Linux can be run here. I really don't want to get into too much depth of the Linux side as of now. Whatever we are going to need, I'm gonna discuss that. So there we go, you have pulled up your uh, second official image, which is BusyBox. I think that's a great start. And now we need to talk more about how these images are being created, what we can do with these created images and how that can be helpful for our purpose in the IT world. So that's it for this video. Hit that subscribe button in case you are not yet aware of my YouTube channel, go ahead, watch that. And I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next video.